This is Twit. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by MeUndies. MeUndies is the most comfortable and hip underwear you'll ever wear. Check out all the styles and get 20% off your first order, plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash twit. Welcome to i5 for the iPhone, episode 132. i5 covers the latest iPhone apps, tips, tricks, and of course, news. I'm Megan Maroney, and I'm ready to make netcast magic. Are you? Are you ready? Good. Last week, Apple released the newest iOS beta to developers with a smarter, better sounding Siri and new racially diverse emojis. Let's start with the improvements to Siri. According to 9to5Mac, Siri's pronunciation has improved, and she also now knows how to speak Russian, Danish, Dutch, Portuguese, Swedish, Thai, and Turkish. iOS 8.3 will include a new emoji picker with more racial diversity, even in Santa Claus. And check out the new family groupings. There are emoji families with two moms and with two dads. Although I did not see any families with one mom or one dad. But the watch emoji did get an update. It looks like an Apple Watch, and it costs $20,000 every time you use it. I just made that last part up, just for you. For the first time ever, Apple is allowing non-developers to sign up for the beta of the next version of iOS, which comes out in March. iOS 8.3 is scheduled to be released later this year. Number two is Alto's Adventure. Alto's Adventure is a new game by Ryan Cash and Jordan Rosenberg of Snowman, and it's designed by illustrator Harry Nesbitt. Alto is your pretty standard shepherd snowboarder who lost his llamas. Everybody knows a guy like that. In the game, you are Alto, and you use simple controls and standard gameplay to snowboard down the hill, press and hold to do flips, collect coins, gather up your lost llamas, avoid pointy rocks, and jump chasms, all the time trying to beat your best score. A stunning reminder of how to reach your most precious goals, especially those that involve llamas. I must admit that I was suspect of Alto's adventure at first. I am not a fan of endless runner games like Jetpack Joyride or Temple Run. Frankly, I find them exhausting. Always with the running! Also, they're usually full of sneaky in-app purchases, but Alto's Adventure is not. It's like an endless runner game that woke up and found itself in Monument Valley. It's a beautifully designed game with amazing visuals that are worth every penny of the $1.99 it sells for in the App Store. Number three is a free app called Jeepies. There are a lot of health and fitness training apps, and I have not tried nearly enough of them to tell you that Jeepies is the best that's out there. But it's pretty simple, and it does almost everything I need it to do. In just a few months, I'll be running Beta Breakers, a 12K race in San Francisco that goes all the way from the bay to the ocean. So I was able to tell GPs when the run was, how far it was, and how fast I wanted to run it. Then it created a personalized plan just for me. In the settings section, I can choose which four days I want to work out. I can specify which is my long day. Then I can preview my goal. Each time I work out, I just click the stopwatch icon and then press start workout. I can listen to music or podcasts while I run, and GPs will tell me to speed up or slow down if I'm not keeping the pace that will help me reach my training goal. When you finish the workout, it will show you your route, and you can log it so your training plan will be updated based on your progress. GP syncs with RunKeeper if you already use that, but it doesn't sync with Apple's health app. You can post your running stats to social media or to your GP's friends. The group of friends I'm running with are called the Mother Cluckers, and we're all using this app. If you're going to be at the Beta Breakers, then keep an eye out for us. We will be dressed like chickens. GP's is free in the App Store. You need to know about MeUndies.com. We spend 90% of our life in underwear. With MeUndies, you'll get great fitting underwear that's two times softer than cotton. MeUndies are the most comfortable underwear you will wear, plus they're stylish. There are so many options from polka dots, plaid, funky pinstripes to dozens of colors for both men and women. Check out the photos yourself at MeUndies.com slash twit. The level of quality would typically retail for two times the MeUndies price. No retail middleman means you save more. MeUndies is made from an environmentally friendly and incredibly soft fabric called Modal. It's sustainably sourced from beechwood trees in the Austrian Alps. They use a CO2 neutral process with a low carbon footprint. 
It saves water and energy due to their spun dyed fiber process. MeUndies fit perfectly and pull moisture away from your skin so you stay cool. Having comfortable underwear will change the way you feel every day. Once you try MeUndies, you will never go back. So get yourself some good underwear. Go to MeUndies.com slash twit and get 20% off and free shipping on your first order. Save even more when you buy a pack. They guarantee you'll be happy or your first pair is free. They do not want you to send them back. That's 20% off when you go to MeUndies.com slash twit. We thank MeUndies for their support of i5 for the iPhone. Number four is an app called Clean. That's C-L-E-E-N. It lets you easily manage the overwhelming amount of photos that are clogging up your phone right now. Just swipe down to delete a photo, swipe up to add the photo to your favorites list, and swipe right to deal with it later. Check your clean stats if you're competitive about the amount of photos you delete. Clean also lets you easily email a photo or upload to Facebook or Twitter. Also to WeChat friends and WeChat moments, but I have no idea what those things are. It doesn't let you upload to Instagram which I find strange. Clean is free and I like it, but if you're willing to pay $1.99 for something slightly better, try Purge, that's P-U-R-R-G-E. This app lets you swipe entire rows of photos to delete them. It also makes cat sounds, get it? Purge. Finally, number five is the brand new YouTube for Kids app that just came out last week. My children love YouTube. They love YouTube so much. I am convinced that sometimes they love YouTube more than they love me. Some days it feels like they get more information from YouTube than they get from me. For example, when I told them that there was a new YouTube app just for kids, my twin boys said, we know, Mr. Stampy told us. Mr. Stampy, of course, is a YouTube Minecraft star. Hello, this is Stampy Longnose and welcome back to another Minecraft gameplay. The YouTube Minecraft star, Obvi. The new YouTube app is a sanitized version of YouTube with curated videos designed for little kids ages in the womb to about 11 or 12, depending on the kid. This app was just released and they're steadily adding more content. There's no option to comment on videos, which is great because we all know that YouTube comments contain enough hatred vitriol to ensure that your child will be scarred for life and then some. But to be honest, I'm not sure that children won't also be scarred for life by having unlimited access to Thomas the Train, Frozen music videos, and the kids from Kids Bop answering questions from their bedrooms. Hey everyone, it's Matt from the Kids Bop Kids. You I should know that just because this is a kids app does not mean that Google is making it ad free. Let's be honest, ads support a lot of what people do, including me, and this is no exception. The ads will be kid appropriate. So far, the only ad I've seen is one for another kid's video about trucks, which is a huge improvement over the Fifty Shades of Grey ad that came on the regular YouTube that I was watching last week with my 11-year-old daughter. That was a teachable moment, for sure. YouTube for Kids does offer parents a timer, so the app will turn off automatically when their screen time is done. But this can be hacked by any child old enough to read and press numbers. There are a few gems on YouTube Kids that are definitely worth exploring, like the guy who sings Let It Go in the voice of Jack Sparrow, Roz from Monsters University, and other Disney characters. Also, I love everything about the TEDx channel. The Kids React videos are always funny, and if your kids like Minecraft, they probably will like Mr. Stampy, like I said before. Here's the thing, my kids are 9 and 11. When the Vine for Kids app came out, they embraced it because they'd had no previous experience with Vine. But they already know YouTube, and so this will take some getting used to, and they might just go back to the regular site. So that when they're on the regular YouTube, I have to talk to them, tell them not to read the comments on the videos, to, or to understand that most comments on videos are made by people who are very angry or very sad, and those comments should probably just be ignored. I do my very best to make sure that my kids, when they're on YouTube or anywhere on the internet, they're in the living room, or if they are in their rooms, they have their doors opened. Have they come upon some videos that I would rather they not have seen? Of course they have. But it gave us the opportunity to have a conversation about it. An awkward conversation, yes, but one that we needed to have. One final note, a few weeks ago I talked about the contacts organizer Human. i or Ivar pointed out that I didn't mention that Human spams all your contacts to verify their address. That is true, Ivar, and that is not very nice of Human. I didn't mention it because I didn't know that it did that. I saw that there was an option to verify contacts and I didn't choose it because I thought it might spam all of my contacts and I didn't want to find out if it would. 
but I was certainly remiss about not mentioning that to you all. I apologize if your contacts got spammed, but maybe you got some updated contact info in the bargain. Are you using any of these apps? Are you? Email feedback to i5 at twit.tv. That does it for this episode. Thanks for stopping by. All of the apps, links, and other info from the show can be found at twit.tv slash i5. Email ideas, questions, or general feedback to i5 at twit.tv or leave us a voicemail at 614 on I-F-I-V-E. I'm Megan Maroney. We'll see you next week on i5 for the iPhone. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com.